Yellow, ladies and gentlemen, Strom back with another three levels, and this time it is one of the more requested three levels of sugarcane for fireworks and um. Hello ladies and gentlemen, Strom back with another three levels video. This time we're going to be looking at three levels of sugarcane. Again, three levels, kind of like we talked about in the last one, doesn't really apply here. It's three, more like three methods. I mean, sure, I scaled them, but you know, our, like our level two is scalable here. Uh, you know, level three, you can, you can build this up a couple of different ways. Level one, you could build, you know, extensions off of this and really change your rates. It's because of the way that sugarcane is farmed. Um, I have seen some questions on Reddit pop up about why isn't this working? Why isn't that working? Can I do that? So before we get into these, let's real quick talk about the properties of sugarcane. Before we do that, though, as always, there is a world download down in the video description. You can look at all of these, get popped in front of these command blocks and pop around to the different farms. Take your schematics, mess with them, break them, blow them up. If you don't like my farms, whatever you want to do, you can get that down in the world download and mess with that for yourself. So let's get into it. There are only two methods of obtaining your initial sugar cane, and one is by finding it naturally in the world. The other is by buying it from Wandering Trader. But since we hate the Wandering Trader, we're not really going to talk about that here. Now, once you get your sugar cane, the question is how to start farming it. So sugar cane can be placed on any of these types of blocks, uh, the dirt variants. So grass, coarse dirt, rooted dirt, regular dirt, podzol, mycelium, mud. It can also be placed on sand and red sand and also moss. Uh, so you can place it on any of those for it to grow. It does need to be adjacent to a water block. You can see it doesn't need to be a water source. It can be flowing water. Um, but for example, if we take that away, when this gets updated, then it's just going to pop off. And then when I go and try and plant it again, I can't plant it until there's water next to it. Even though you can possibly find a four tall sugar cane out in the wild, your normally planted sugar cane will only grow up to three tall. So it can only reach that full uh, four tall on initial world generation or initial chunk generation, but we can grow it up to three tall. As far as how long it takes to get there. One of the big things I see is I planted my sugar cane it's not growing. The reason is, is because sugar cane needs to get random ticked. And then on top of that, it needs to get random ticked multiple times. Um, if the wiki is to be believed, it needs to actually get 16 random ticks to grow one level. That needs to get hit 16 times on the random tick to grow one level and another 16 times to grow another level to the maximum height of three. Now that should take an average of about 18 minutes for one level to grow. So then another 18 for it to grow up to two. Now, obviously you can get really lucky and just you know, in a few seconds grow three, or you can get unlucky and be staring at this for half an hour. If you hear someone telling you to bone meal your sugar cane, that does not work. That is a bedrock only feature. We don't talk about bedrock here. So you can't bone meal it. Um, also the old, uh, sh you know, shifting floor sugar cane farms that would just force the random tick to recheck and then grow. That does not work anymore. That was patched out a while ago. So really our option are to plant and wait. One of the more common methods to do this um, is by using observers. So you hit every sugar cane on an observer that sets off a piston underneath. So as soon as it grows up, it breaks it down there. That is one option. Um, we are not going to be discussing that because part of the three level series, you'll notice the titles of these videos is my three levels. So you have seen me showcase um, pieces of other people's designs, or maybe I include it as like an extra design to show um, or there'll be a piece of a module that is just like, you know what, this circuit is theirs, but the overall concept is still, um, something that's unique, or you'll see me address beforehand. Like I just don't have one for this level. Um, uh, but I really wanted to come up with three levels of sugar cane because, uh, this is one that was highly requested. Um, so I really wanted to do it justice and do some unique designs. Does that mean the designs are the best out there? Maybe not. Are they going to be the easiest to build? Maybe not. Are they going to be the coolest? 100%. So that's how we're going to grow our sugar cane. We'll talk about the methods to harvest it um, when we get into our three levels, but let's talk about what you can do with the sugar cane after you've farmed it. There's really two things to get out of it. There's sugar and there's paper. Sugar you can use to make uh, the fermented spider eye for your brewing, or you can use it to make cake. If you like to use cake for your redstone, some people like to do that. It's fine. 
Uh, or you can take the paper and make books to sell to librarians. Um, you can make your banner patterns. You can make maps if you're doing map arts. Um, or obviously the key one, the firework rocket. The firework rocket with the addition of Elytra has become so vital to the game. Pretty much every server needs a supply of rockets. Um, if you're an economy server to sell to players, if you're not an economy server to give to players, um, single player so you can get around your fast travel, all that. Basically, Elytra has replaced a lot of methods of fast travel just by using your rockets. So, we can use these to fly around, and sorry for the blatant butt shot there. Um, but now, let's talk about one other key aspect of farming sugarcane um, as far as growing it that I feel like a lot of times gets missed in when I see those questions of why is no sugarcane growing? Unfortunately, you cannot chunk load sugarcane. You need to have a player around for it to get random ticks. So either a player or a bot needs to be in the vicinity of sugarcane in order for it to get the random ticks it needs to grow. So chunk loading a sugarcane farm will do nothing except run your redstone, but the sugarcane will never grow. And also just because it's in loaded range also doesn't mean it's in random tick range. So I have here um, a sugarcane farm, or not really a farm, but just a field of sugarcane that I let grow while standing on this spot right here. And we can see it grew all the way out to here, but the rest of this never grew a single level. That is because that random tick range will not include all loaded chunks. It's about the same size as a despawn sphere. Um, there's, some, there's some little intricacies about when that's actually gonna move and include a chunk or not for the random ticking, but basically just think about it as having it within about 128 blocks of the player. And uh, as we can see, those lines there are all lining up with where we did got our tall sugar king growing. So just know that if your base is like right here and you're messing around with your build and all that, and your sugar cane farm is over there and you look over and see, yep, I can see it. It's not gonna grow because it's outside of random tick range. So that's pretty much it. I mean, just make sure that you are actually around your sugarcane for it to grow and then decide what method you want to use in order to collect it. Now, there's nothing wrong with this method. It's just, again, as I said, I wanted to come up with some unique methods. So normally you'd you'd have this kind of setup and then you'd have like a hopper minecart going underneath here to actually collect it. There's nothing wrong with that. Works just fine. But let's get in and talk about these levels right here. So we have level one, which is actually dirt cheap. Normally we just do quick and dirty, but this is dirt cheap. Uh, they're getting an upgrade. This one is scalable. So you can go from uh, you know 100 per hour to 3K per hour to 6K, 7K, 8K per hour. And then we have over here, it can't really be OP. Normally we go for approaching OP on this level, but it's just sugar cane growing. There's not much OP you can get about it. So. That one is about 14k per hour as it runs and we'll look at those but let's start out with dirt cheap here we have two different options right on the left is going to be the version that's going to be based on a clock uh, right over here on our right is the one that's going to be based on uh, actual random ticking and let's start out by taking a look at this one right here so if you do follow my channel you may have already seen this i just released a short on this not too long ago about this dirt cheap bud uh, and what that is, if you don't know what it is, a bud is a block update detector. So this piston will detect whenever there's a block update next to it, kind of like an observer, but multi-directional. So if I set off any side of this, you can see I'm getting signals coming out no matter what side I update. And even if I update down here as well, that is setting it off. So you can think of a bud as kind of like the same function as an observer. Um, except the bud is not always going to give a signal out. We've just set up this one to give a signal out. Except the bud is not always going to give a signal out. We've just set up this one to give a signal out as well. So we just kind of put the signal back from this. What it's doing, if I slow the game down, I'm going to plant the sugar cane manually and look in free cam so we can see this. The game is running at two MSPT, so one tenth the speed. But we're going to see that's going to update that piston. Then it sets off the smart piston here. But you saw that one started extending while this one is still extended. So this piston head being extended means that this uh, is actually going to prevent that piston from going off. Now it's kind of stuck in this bud state where anything that will tell it to update, it's going to recognize, oh, I'm actually powered. I need to do something. So we can see actually both of these right now. This block right here is actually QC'd by this block. And this block right here is QC'd by that block. So both of these are actually ready to fire off. And as soon as I put a sugar cane here, it updates this one, which then updates this one, and then it sets off the bud. So back to normal speed and look at this. 
And that's what we're using to detect our random ticks. Now, you know, we could put this on like every single one, like without the observers, but really what's the point? Um, there is a chance that you're going to grow up some plants to be uh, they're free tall, and then they're going to be sitting there waiting, and they would actually get another random tick before this one gets its random tick to grow. Uh, the chance of that is pretty low, though. Um, but as you see, once this goes off, then it just sends a signal to break all these uh, sugarcane using the pistons. We do have a small amount of item loss. Now, each design in a sugarcane farm is usually going to have a small amount of item loss just because of the way that it breaks off randomly. Um, there are some that are lossless, but here we're talking, you know, in these dirt cheap ones, we're talking maybe 5% loss. And uh, these rates of 300 per hour, I got these by actually tick warping these, by running these for 10 hours and then taking the output and seeing how much I got per hour there rather than just saying I'm growing this much sugar cane, you know, but I didn't count how much went in. So we're probably producing, you know, more like 325 sugar cane and we're collecting 300 per hour. Uh, but what we do to help maximize that, I'll go back into free cam here. Um, we just put this repeater up so that we can add a little bit of length onto that signal and see the pistons stick out. And it gives those things some time to pop off. And most of them will then pop off into the water stream. If you really want to reduce that loss some more, we can add on another signal right here and just make that at a different interval. So we'll make that at, let's say, uh, two repeater ticks. And now those pistons are going to stick out for longer. And now those piston heads will stick out for a little bit longer. Now, like I said, you could extend this by adding in some more modules using that same bud to set it off right over there, but extend the modules and, you know, just put a repeater right here and then have another set of sugarcane lines going down there and bring your water streams over. Or you could just build multiple of these. This is not a very expensive bud right here. It's just a couple extra pistons. That's really it. But over here to the left, we have the version that is timer based. This is an item despawn clock. So basically you spit out an item onto a pressure plate, which turns off a torch. When this item despawns after five minutes of it being loaded. So that is only when it's loaded. If it's unloaded, that timer does not run. Uh, but then this despawns, it relieves the pressure plate. And then this torch turns back on. We take a signal and first we send out another item back down onto it. Um, so we're still getting about 300 per hour because that means you only have to dispense 12 items every hour. So that's not very much at all. And then we just have the signal come up and that's what actually sets off the system. So... I have been also replacing a lot of my dirt cheap options where we just use the sand block um, to use another piston that pushes this block back in place for the monostable circuit. That way we don't have to worry about it, you know, accidentally breaking if it just so happens to go off in the wrong loaded state or anything like that, because this is just a solid block. It won't break because it's sand. Um, but I'm going to kill this item and this will simulate the item despawning and we're going to see that signal is going to come up. Set off our pistons and items go down. Again, that 300 per hour was clocked into what actually makes it into the chests, not what lands here on the side. So that's it for dirt cheap. You, you don't even need the glass. I just did the glass so we could see inside there what's going on. Um, you just got to make sure you've got full blocks where it needs to be full blocks. And the rest you can just build out of whatever junk you have lying around. So now let's move on to level two. This is getting an upgrade. And this one I do enjoy. And I'll explain why in just a moment. This is a slight modification off of the sugarcane tower that we built on the syndicate server back when it was operational. And this I really enjoy. So what we have is we have modules here. So each one of these layers is its own module. Um, you get about a hundred per hour per module. In this exact setup here, we have 30 modules, so that's 3K per hour. But what we have is we have these walls here and these walls are going to double extend out push all the items and they extend out fast enough that these items do not have a time to fall down to the ground. So even the ones here on the side of the concrete, they don't have time to fall far enough until the concrete pushes them down into the water. And then they all just fall through the water down into the collection here where they all go to the center and just go off the chests. Now, a few things to note, you will see there does just appear to be floating water. This is update suppressed water. I do have a video on that. Right over here, if you pull a 180, is the version that you can see. Uh, I'm going to show you the setup to do that water suppression. If you don't want to suppress water, because one, you can break uh, water that's suppressed, and two, it requires extra effort, there's no reason you can't use like signs or even open fence gates um, underneath the water to actually keep that from flowing. So we just put in some fed case gates, open it like that. There's no reason you can't, except for the fact that it doesn't look as cool. And obviously that's what Minecraft is all about. Looking cool. Right? 
So I will get back to explaining the mechanics of this. We'll see it fire off in just a moment. Real quick again, though, talk about the water suppression setup. I will link down to my video description where I explain water suppression and how you do it. But basically we have this slime block structure. This is way beyond push limit. So if I retract this piston, that piston can't actually pull anything, which causes the game to not update the blocks around that piston head, meaning this water doesn't get the uh, command that it's supposed to start flowing. So I can break out these, then break out these slime blocks, then break out these pistons. Because they're not directly adjacent with the water, I can put the glass back, and now I just have floating water. Now again, the only reason to do this is just for build aesthetics. This has no functional difference than the floating signs uh, or the open fence gates. So if you want to do the water suppression, I recommend that this be the one you grab your schematic off of. But let's get back to how this is actually going to operate now. So what is actually opting to set this off and to get this to actually function? Because if we don't do this right, this system right here, this double piston extender, is going to just break and keep doing this over and over again. Technically, you'll get some sugar cane because there's some time where it's exposed and then we'll push it in the water, but you don't want this to happen on all your layers. So a while ago, Pingu actually helped me out with this circuit right here, which if we send a pulse into this redstone dust, and that will then mean that this observer doesn't have time to kick off before it gets retracted again and retracted back into place. And then all it's doing is powering a moving piston or block 36, so it can actually return back into place. Um, one thing to note, um, you do need the redstone dust here. I recommend not putting that in until you know that you've got that signal generator correct. And then I also have a safety mechanism right here for building, meaning that's gonna stay extended because what we have is when it's nighttime, that's gonna come back down. And then when it goes back to day, it's gonna send a quick pulse into there. And I'm just gonna go into free cam, turn this back into day mode so we can see what's gonna happen here. This is my favorite part. These are gonna extend so fast again that this doesn't have time to fall to the ground, so it falls into the water, and it's just gonna go in a wave. So one of the key modifications I made is the signal is just gonna wave up here, and then down on the middle, and then back up on the side. So here we go, three, two, one. And here comes all our sugar cane flowing down in. I'm going to go ahead and lock this again and break this redstone dust. So again, if you decide to take a schematic of just this version and put in signs, we're making it a little redstone safe there just so you don't accidentally set off the redstone and don't clock that whole thing. Um, but yeah, if if you another thing to note, if you are on a server where someone likes to just come around and like spam note blocks, right? It just smack the note block. If I had that redstone dust there, it was actually going to set everything off and then break a bunch of your slices. So, you know, maybe just, you know, if, if you trust your players, you, they just need some heads up, you know, don't put in this note block and just put the redstone underground here with a sign saying, do not touch. Um, if you're on a server where you don't trust players not to try and grief you, maybe find a new server and don't build this. So this is just, this, this is, again, this is just kind of cool. You see it coming down. There's no reason you couldn't do this on a different clock system. Again, just make sure that you have a monostable pulse, just a very short pulse coming into this right here so that this signal generator gets its uh, correct duration. Make sure all your repeaters are set correctly as they go throughout this system. A couple other things to note, you know, this doesn't need to be obsidian. This can just be any non-sticky block. So you could use like moss or glazed terracotta. We do have light sources in here. You can move these somewhere else, but that's just so no mobs spawn inside of our layers right here. And then as I was talking about with scaling it, um, you know, you could take one of these and put it over here on the side. You know, you could build just one of these um, and stack it taller. You could do these three and stack it up by modules. Um, all you gotta do is just make sure you kind of repeat the snaking. So here we have the system to snake the signal down and make sure that those repeaters are on one tick there. And then here we have this, this system to snake the signal up. So again, is this the most efficient way to farm sugarcane? No. Okay, it's probably not really that cool in all reality, but I really like this one. I I just love that. I, in fact, let's let's do the walls again. Let's do the walls. So satisfying. 
And that's really that. So again, thanks to Pengu for helping me out with that circuit. Um, there are designs that use this same kind of double piston extender that don't need that special circuit. That's because they have blocks in front of the pistons here. Um, so it's a uh, horizontal instead of a vertical wall. That changes things because the way that block 36 works, um, when it actually pushes the first block, it, it's, yeah. Just know that you don't need this same stabilizer if this was going to be a horizontal thing like a universal tree farm or something like that. But these two high walls, yeah, we did need that. So, yeah, that's level two. So, level one, I came up with a bud that replaces the observer. Level two, we did the double push wall, and it was this really kind of fun concept with the floating water in there. So, level three must be like this cool looking thing. Maybe I shaped it like a creeper or it's it like it spells out the name Strom, or I like it's the it's um it's rows of sugar cane with flying machines. One thing I just want to note real quick before we get into this design, you'll notice that it's on mud with carpet here that's covering our water um, because you can place carpet on top of water as long as you have a block adjacent to start it on. So like I could start it on this block, I can start it there. Not inside the water, but start on top of the water, then break that and now it'll stay. Um, and then there's mud, which does have the property that it's shorter than a normal block. Like, yeah, we have some light sources to make sure that we don't have any light level up here. So no mobs spawn up here. Turn on my light levels. You can see there's no red there. But really the only reason for the carpet and the mud combination was just, you know, to look cool, to have this like two-tone thing with the bright green against the dark background. There's no reason this can't be just regular dirt and then open water here. But, you know, got a deco, and then I surrounded it in yellow concrete. If you would like to complain about yellow concrete, you can call 1-800... And that'll get you connected to where you can um, request that I don't use concrete. So hopefully there were no, you know, bugs in a video that caused you not to get that phone number so you can call right in. But enough of that, let's get on to the actual machine. So you see we have these series of flying machines with these slabs underneath the honey. You may have seen something familiar to this. Um, so there is a design out there where you can um, shove honey uh, through the minecarts that are sitting on slabs and then just retain those as it goes back and forth. The slabs then return on top of hoppers. You wait for it to unload. There's nothing wrong with that system, but again, I wanted to see you know what else I could do with it to make it my own. So what we have is... We have these hopper minecart uh, unloaders that will break the hopper minecarts. Hopper minecarts will then go into this water stream where they then get set back up here to get recycled. And then all the items drop into this lower stream and get sent over to our uh, loaders over there. But that means that we need to actually replace the minecart. So we'll, we'll see this in operation in just a little bit, but I'm just going to show this manually for right now. So we would see that these dispensers here would spit out hopper minecarts because again, they can go down one block onto rails. And then what we have is this is going to pull out of the way. So these start falling and then push back forward to line these up with the chest, which has the same lineup as that pixel of the honey block that items can go through, uh, not just items, but entities. So I'm going to come over here. I'm going to hit this real quick, this note block. And we're going to see what's going to happen if I turn on my hitboxes is it is going to align right on top of that one pixel. Now do note, this is directional. You will see that these hopper minecarts change direction from what they were when they were sitting on top of here. If I built this in the uh, north-south direction, so this way instead of this way, these are going to pop off like this and then push each other away as they fall down. And you could have problems with it you know, not hitting right or, or getting knocked off. So make sure that this gets built in the east west direction. Now these are going to be able to stay on as it goes in this direction. But once it gets to the other side, there are just uh, more hopper minecart unloaders like this. So it'll grab these off, eat the minecart and replace it with new minecarts and then send it on its way. So to start the system, all I have to do is come down to this end and turn it on. I'm then going to want to have a player or a bot inside of here because again, we want to make sure that the entire thing is covered by that random tick range. So if you just turn this on and stayed over here, about two thirds of the farm would only be able to grow. That would be kind of a waste. Um, but we have two options here. So right now it is in day night mode. So I'm just going to break this real quick. Uh, we're going to pretend that's there, but once it goes to nighttime and then goes back to day, this is going to turn on and send the signal to send the flying machines. 
Um, I'm going to turn that off for right now though. Uh, so let me put my clock back here and we're going to use just automatic return mode. So as soon as it uh, goes over there, comes back, it's just going to send it off again. Um, I'm going to do that by turning on this lamp right here. And we're going to see our hopper minecarts are going to get shut out, thrown under our flying machines and our flying machines start going down. Um, so these will break both of the sugar cane blocks um, that can grow because you see it can grow up to there. So that breaks it. Hopper minecarts able to pick it up. Now, it is not, once again, 100% uh, lossless, but we can see here, uh, let's see, do we have any items dropping off? I do have hitboxes on, right? Yep, hitboxes are turned on. Do I see any items? Yes, there's no items yet. So it's, uh, you know, like 99.9% .9 lossless, but sometimes you will see an item pop off around here just because it took one of those weird random trajectories. It's not as bad as it used to be because they kind of uh, lowered the amount of randomness you can get on those trajectories but it is still a possibility. And then we'll see once the flying machines land into their dock, this observer right here that's coming along will set off the next chain where it'll then reload the flying machines on the opposite side with the minecarts and send it off again. Well, let's watch the unloading. There it's unloaded. You see there it's getting refilled and it's sending the flying machines off again. All those hopper minecarts flow back up here into this chest where we have a chest minecart that then gets refilled and uh, refills these dispensers. That's why we only have this 27 wide. You know, one of the reasons is to be able to get this observer on a flying machine, but the other reason um, is there is 27 inventory slots inside of a chest minecart. So let's do 27 hopper minecarts going back and forth. Why not? And then it will just go back and forth in that mode. I'm going to go ahead and turn this off now so it's not going to automatically send back off for me. Because we can see the amount of items that we get coming in from this after it's been sitting for a bit is actually quite huge. That's why we have a couple of these shulker loaders here. Um, there's no reason that you have to do shulker loaders. You could just do a line of hoppers um, that just feed down in. There's no, really nothing to filter, but we have added filters on here because we're going to use a shulker loader. Um, so if you didn't want to do all this redstone, you can just do a line of hoppers here facing down into chests. Um, you could even do double speed chests and then it's going to be able to unload that. So we do have this recycling here to make sure that we have enough time to pick up those items. Um, and we're definitely going to want that if we're going to run this on the day night mode, because what's going to happen is the length of this is set so that each one of these rows, um, if it grows three high, is going to fill up one hopper mine cart. So that's the exact length that we've chosen. So I wouldn't go any longer than this. You could definitely go shorter if you really, you know, just wanted to cut out a big chunk of the farm and uh, lower your build time. Obviously, you're going to lower your harvest rate then, but, you know, et cetera, et cetera. But what will happen is you're going to see even a much larger influx of these items here that are going to need to recycle for a bit more. So all we do is we have them coming in a water stream here, going over these filtered hoppers and then going back into the same water stream to get recycled. And then they come over here to these shulker loaders and we fill it up there. If you want to completely turn off the system, like you're worried about people flying over it, um, you know, there's no reason you can't just put a lever here and make sure that this piston is always extended. So here, even if we change, you know, between the value of day and night, someone's flying over at just the right time and they would have set it off and flown past it, whatever, it doesn't matter because this isn't going to set it off anymore. And obviously flying machines do need to be loaded. Like we said, you need a player in order to random to the sugar cane so we don't bother talking about any chunk loaded or anything. But if you decide to turn this off, you know, you fly out of here, come over, you turn off the system so it doesn't launch again, and it docks over here, you do need to wait for it to come back and dock into here before you can take off, because flying machines in loaded chunks will break. However, the flying machines are all small, they're each their own module, so these are not connected to each other. So if you do, you know, fly out accidentally, you know, like you see a creeper and you get scared, and you just, ah! you're not going to have to worry about it. Most of them will stay functional, but the other ones are not going to be that difficult to rebuild. It's just these blocks right here, these honey blocks, the slabs underneath, and then this little engine right on top. So why did I go with this? Well, because if I would have just come up with a way to shove the hopper mine carts inside the honey there and have them unload, it would have just been the design that I learned from watching the Peaceful series, and it wouldn't have been mine. Why didn't I just decide to put in trap doors next to the sticky blocks and then drop the hopper mine carts onto there? Uh, you know, much easier. Don't have to worry about item alignment as much um, because then that's basically just Mango's design. Why didn't I just cover the field and observers and then have Piston somehow doing something? Because um, I don't hate myself.
I actually enjoy doing this kind of stuff. So this was this was fun. Those of you who have seen my channel, this is very similar to the same concept as the pumpkin farm uh, that we had set up that would recycle the mine carts with their own breakers. Um, I just like this. I really like this. I think um, if I was back on a server these days, I would definitely be interested in this type of option here uh, for sugarcane. Because again, with this size field, so if you build the full length field, you're going to be getting about 14,000 hour if you're running it continuous, um, really in either mode. Um, I would prefer to just have it running back and forth regularly because there's not that many entities involved in this. All the sugar cane that gets broken gets picked up by the hopper mine carts real quick. So it's basically just the 27 hopper mine carts on the flying machines. Um, the MSPT is not that bad. Or you can let it all grow and run in continuous mode. Um, or not in continuous mode, sorry, and then just do one big harvest by setting it off once. There you're looking at about 8,600 on a single harvest. Um, so that's a few rockets, just a few. But that is going to wrap it up for me in this three levels of sugarcane farm video. Again, down in the video description will be the world download um, where you can download this and open it up in your game uh, for a copy for yourself, run it out, try it. Even if you're not going to build these things, you just saw something in there that you wanted to check out, by all means, feel free to download it and check it out. Grab your schematics off of, uh, expand it, use world edit on it, whatever you want to. And as always, before we sign off, I know this doesn't apply to most of you because everything is great. But just remember, there's some of us out there and some of your friends or family, maybe, where they are not okay right now. I just want to remind those of you out there who are listening, you're not okay. It's okay not to be okay. All right, keep your chin up because things will get better, I promise you. Uh, but in the meantime, it's okay not to be okay. Don't stress yourself out further by trying to fake it or by trying to put on a fake smile or convince everyone around you that everything's okay. Sometimes it's okay to say, you know what? Not really okay right now. Don't really want to talk about it. That's fine. There's no shame in that. So keep your chin up. Again, it's okay not to be okay. I'll catch you in the next one. Have a good one. Bye.